we say baby. God knows it's a baby. And God knows that it's a unique human being from the moment of conception. And what we can't yet do medically is precisely tell the mother the moment of conception. We don't have a medical way to determine that moment. Or I would be focusing our legislation on that moment. But what we do have now with ultrasound is we have the ability to identify that heartbeat in that baby. And the legislation on the HR 490, the Heartbeat, Heartbeat Protection Act, is this, that if we require the would-be abortionist to check for a heartbeat before that abortionist would continue with an abortion. They have to maintain records on this, check for a heartbeat, and then if a heartbeat can be detected, the baby is protected because we know that's life. And if an abortionist stops that beating heart, we know that it has ended the life of that innocent baby. And as we brought this legislation forward, we found out that there's something about that heartbeat that speaks to the conscience and the hearts of America, Madam Speaker. That we, we know that, I'll say, billboard after billboard, there must be thousands of them around America, many of them put up by the Knights of Columbus, that say, abortion stops a beating heart. And when we see that billboard, maybe it only registers a little bit, but we've seen it, many of us, hundreds and hundreds of times. And we associate the heartbeat with life. If there's a beating heart, we know there's life. If you stop that beating heart, you know that you have ended a human life. And the argument that a baby isn't viable, the Supreme Court in Roe vs. era back in 73 said, well, that's maybe, we think, 28 weeks. But now we have babies that survive at 22 weeks. That's a month and a half less than before. I recall a circumstance in 19, let me see, it would be 1992 where um, I, had a, I had an individual that was uh, part of a, he was part of the administrative oversight on a construction project that I was on that fall. And he was gone for two weeks and I knew why. His wife had gone into labor and delivered a little baby boy prematurely. This little baby boy was in the early part of the 20 some weeks, and I'm not certain, but I'm just guessing earlier than 24 weeks, but certainly not 28. And they went to the city and stayed in that, in that hospital with this little boy for two weeks and didn't leave, stayed at his side and they prayed for him and they did all they could. He was hooked up to all kinds of tubes. And when he came back to me after, after two weeks, he is relatively assured that this little boy would survive. And he delivered, he walked up to me and handed me a cigar that said, it's a boy. He wasn't handing out those cigars the first two weeks because he wasn't confident this little boy was going to live. But he handed me that cigar and I, and I said to him, and I knew where he stood politically, and I, and I said to him, you'd do anything we would do anything to save the life of this, any little baby, any little boy or any little girl, we'd do anything to save their life. There's no amount of expense we wouldn't go to. There's no amount of medical effort we wouldn't go to to save the life of a baby. No matter how small their chance was to survive, we will do everything. We'll spend $100,000, $200,000, $500,000 to save that little life. We do everything we can do with all the medical technology that we have. We spare no effort from doctors, from nurses. We'll spare no effort on our knees praying to God that this little baby can be born and can remain and be healthy and grow into a full human being. And he agreed with me 100%. He said, I agree with you, I agree with you, and I'm so glad that my little boy looks like he's going to be okay. And I said then, you're still, are you going to go into the polls next month? This is October of 1992. Are you going to vote for the man for president who will appoint justices to the Supreme Court that are going to continue to enable abortion in America? And he looked at me and he called me a name that we can refer to by first letter of those three words. But he said it in such a way that it wasn't insulting to me 
it said instead, you have drilled a point home. Now after these 30 some years, I ran into him in the grocery store here several Sundays ago after mass, we're both Catholic. I hadn't talked to him in a long time. I asked him how that little boy was doing and he told me, and he said, you straightened me out back then, didn't you? Do you remember that? He asked if I remembered it. And uh, of course I did. I said, yes, I remembered it, but I didn't want to bring it up. I did want to know how he is. So that's a, that's a composite of the conscience of a nation, Madam Speaker. And I think it tells us that we all haven't come to the realization of the immorality of abortion yet. But America came to the realization of the immorality of slavery. And we will get to the realization of the immorality of abortion. We are making progress. And looking at this legislation, H.R. 490, we have a number of 69% of Americans support protecting any baby with a heartbeat. 69%. And that's 55% and that's of Democrats support protecting a baby with a heartbeat. And this legislation would save the lives of at least 90% of the babies that are otherwise being aborted. And so I want to thank all the people that have done so much work on this that brought us to this point. I want to, that we are at 170 co-sponsors. We've had a hearing. Next step, hopefully, is to get a markup before the Judiciary Committee. And my goal is to bring the heartbeat bill to this floor of House of Representatives January 19th of 2018. That's the date of the March for Life here in this town, and that's the date we need to bring that legislation to this floor. And if we can do so and send it over to the Senate, the Senate can take it up and pass it. I'm confident our president will sign it, and we can begin to put an end to this carnage. But to, to speak of the magnitude of the carnage of abortion, 60 million babies aborted since 1973 in Roe v. Wade. And I had a, a, a lady uh, who's a Democrat say to me just over here a couple of months ago, Steve, why are you so worried about this? We have abortions down to where they're almost or maybe even are below a million a year. Only a million abortions a year? How can anyone quantify that and say that's anything other than a bloody carnage and a loss of human potential and a denial of the gifts from God? 60 million babies aborted since Roe versus Wade in, 19, in 1973. And how many babies would be born to those who were aborted? How many of those little girls that were aborted in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and even in the early part of this millennia, for a small part, the earliest part of this millennia, how many of those little girls would be having babies today? How many would they have? And just a back of the envelope calculation tells me that there's another 60 million babies that are missing because of the 60 million that have been aborted. And here we are in America, and I'm listening to people argue, and they will say, well, you know, there's work that Americans won't do, and um, we have a shortage of labor, so we have to go to some other culture, some other civilization, and bring in hundreds of thousands or millions of people to do work that Americans won't do. I wonder if you'd ask those innocent little voices that are in heaven today if they wouldn't mind laying a few bricks or maybe cutting some grass or doing a little bit of landscaping around or maybe cutting a little bit of meat. These are all things I do, by the way, even today if I get the chance. Ask them if they wouldn't like to have a chance at the right to life. If they wouldn't like to have an opportunity to live, to love, to breathe air, to laugh, to have their own children, to enjoy the greatest country the world has ever seen. And it's all denied to them. It's denied to 60 million of them. And it's denied to perhaps another 60 million who wouldn't, didn't even have the chance to be aborted because their future parents were killed in the womb. 60 million plus 60 million, 